Hello everyone. Uh, I hope all, you are all well and in good spirits. Certainly, I'm very grateful to be at this uh, conference. The aims of this conference are very laudable and well worth pursuing with genuine attention. And I'm equally grateful to the forum for allowing me to share some thoughts with all present. Uh, my presentation is actually entitled Art and Design and Artificial Edifice. Uh, the purpose of my presentation is to consider where we are at the present moment, setting aside the recent external pressures imposed by international socio-political agendas and the eroding of fundamental personal freedoms resulting from the COVID-19 crisis. It has made us think all again a bit. As many of us are aware, the current system for art and design education has been teetering on the verge of economic unsustainability for some time now. So I suppose the real question for us here today is, how do we rescue our precious baby? I strongly believe that we must make a conscious effort to ensure that the race towards alternatives does not mean that we merely impose a new set of emperor's clothes as the new credo. The last thing we would want is for one type of ideological tyranny to be supplanted by a new tyranny, surely. This is already happening to some extent, given that our personal modes of thinking are being subtly but surely stunted by the limitations of the software engineer's programming intentions. Our decision making is not always our own anymore, but design is exactly about making precise decisions. So I believe we need to think clearly at this juncture. Let us take a step back and see how we got here. At least as far back as the time when art and design became recognized as a respectable pursuit beyond secondary school. And you'll find the journey is actually quite amusing. At some point in the 60s, it wasn't just free love. It was also freedom of artistic and intellectual expression. Derrida, Camus, Sartre, et al. This shook us up for sure. And then in the 70s, we built upon the fact that us archetypes had become very good aid, uh, uh, almost indispensable aid to prop up marketeers. This accelerated into the idiotic designer 80s. Remember those? And then in the 90s, we became acceptable in the chattering class circles. Heck, we even concocted various versions of our own Oscars. Polytechnics and colleges of further education used to be where the non-gifted school kids were dispatched to pursue various practical subjects like hairdressing, apprenticeships of various kinds, mechanical, or electrical, engineering, plumbing, etc. Oh, and arty-farty people like drawing, painting, sculpture, photography, and commercial art followers later to be redefined collectively as art and design. Ah, hardly subjects have demanded the intellectual cells of Hercule Poirot. A lot of us were dyslexic anyway and had difficulties with the three R's and were labeled as lazy at best. But polytechnics and colleges put up with our insecurities. In 1992, our homes in the form of polytechnics and colleges of further education were forced to convert to universities now, this was done with the zeal of the medieval reformists who believed against, who, or do not believe, rebelled against the Roman Catholic Church and the papacy, which ironically gave us the Italian Renaissance and our current humanist legacy. The existing universities, the UK universities, did not like this one little bait, but despite what our local politicians might say to us even today, they established the original educational cartel in the form of the Russell Group in 1994. At that point, it had 17 members to, to, to begin with, but has now expanded to 24. And this cartel aimed to preserve the elite status of the old guard and its methodologies and systems. And it has done so very successfully to this day. I hope we are not becoming kind of like them. I mean, now in 2021, we find ourselves a part of the same cabal, albeit at footstool level. We've taken to the color 
of the real victors, the old established guard that permits us to share their crumbs. The problem is bigger because there are more of us involved this time around. Having followed the corporate business model and engineering the deliberate commoditization of education, our motives are for being educators have also morphed into personal gain before dissemination of knowledge, personal want before student need, less teaching and less learning all around is the result. Many questions arise. Are we institutions of free, unbridled inquiry? Are we institutions of curiosity and investigation anymore? Are we free from the biases of our direct and indirect funders? Who is really in charge? The managerial class is really in charge when you look at it, not teachers and technicians who actually produce the student product, so to speak. Are we institutions where learning is equal in terms of interest as the accumulation of real estate by a vice chancellors who run them? Are we just glorified training camps where students' behavior is molded to retain the, station, uh, the, the, the kind of the social status quo? Dare we let them loose to challenge our thinking without repercussions? Where, I ask, is our re reformation going to come from? Are we really a profession even? We are certainly a service. Collectively, we have created entrenched silos of identity variants, preoccupied with part and not the whole. Some of these shackles need to be broken, and rather quickly, before we find that our students rise up to the false mythos we have created and exercise on them. All most art and design academics do, in my opinion at the moment, is generate minor, sometimes entertaining diversions from reality. We here often see projects that are so self-absorbed that the experience they provide can be compared with a fireworks show. The long anticipated launch, the fantastic boom and sparkle, and then the total burnout. An individual or soul crowd is entertained temporarily and then Whew. Nothing of real consequence remains, nothing that is of lasting value, just temporary gratification. We've managed to shift a few crackers, that is all. From first hand experience, in practice and teaching, I know that most current art and design courses on offer are spearheaded by identity politics, socio political indoctrination, denial of our real historical past and the promotion of unrealistic expectations as far as the employment prospects are concerned. Students are constantly told the myth that somewhere in design Disneyland, there is someone waiting to give them the perfect job. Simultaneously, agencies are only too prepared to offer unpaid so-called internships on the promise of a potential job somewhere in the distant future slave labor really at the, at, the, at the present time. The mantra is that there is no crisis in the job market. Now, hey, you can always study for a master's degree, a PhD, and of course, become a teacher at the same institute you graduated from to perpetuate the collective myth. Who cares what you have? No experience in terms of working with people who will challenge your opinions and beliefs and often tear them to shreds. Look at the bigger picture. Petrol cars are unsustainable, people are disposable, conventional jobs are unnecessary unless you are branded a key worker. Real education for the sake of improving your mind is an expensive luxury now. And even training in some technologies is invariably dud in that they are obsolete almost as soon as you've finished your precious latte. The scope, I believe, of a problem is immense. The answer is not more layers of so-called future-proof curriculum. One hears a lot about these. It lies in the acknowledgement that our entire system is broken and requires a serious lopping so that the core may survive. Those of us who don't forever need the crutch of machinery to exist or perform most of our daily tasks would be better engaged in the reality of making marks, 
drawing our ideas and visions and immersed in human thinking, doing the making as a natural and sustainable activity. Does that make us modern Luddites an emerging technocratic feudal system that is being birthed as we speak? If it makes us modern Luddites, so be it. Then I'm happy to be labelled as one. Perhaps Nick Land's Accelerationist Manifesto and Mark Fisher's book Capitalist Realism might be worth a read before we take a leap from the diving board, guys and ladies and people of any gender whatsoever, whoever you choose to be. That's the modern world. On a more positive note, my suggestion for immediate application will be to create a personal culture where very simple and doable things take place with little cost but some effort. I would suggest anybody can learn to observe with the intention of discovering something new learn to listen and engage in dialogue without being overtly judgmental, at least to begin with. Learn to write ideas and thoughts on paper or some other tactile substrate. This physical act itself helps to pace our thinking. Learn to engage in relevant reading to increase subject knowledge and broaden your mind in terms of detail and accuracy. Learn to investigate for more than one obvious source. You know, something convenient like Google, for example. There are other search engines. Use multiple sources, including talking to people. Learn to question everything, starting with yourself. Learn to be self-critical without fear. And with that, I say, good luck. It's been a pleasure talking to everyone. Thank you.